UK students are abandoning language learning, so we're looking for a more creative approach. As language lecturers, we believe the way we teach and assess modern languages in our universities needs a rethink. I'm pretty sure we're all aware of the issues with the traditional education system. The way we're taught English in school literally sucks. We also have another problem here. Social media. Even though we have social media today, we have a bunch of educational content on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, we still learn languages in the traditional way. Today I want to talk about the problem with learning languages, you know, why we still can't learn language even though we're watching YouTube videos. I'm pretty sure you're watching a lot of YouTube videos, right? You're watching a lot of teachers on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, but still you didn't get that level where you wanted to be. You always wanted to get. If you ask my son, how did you learn English? I will, you can never hear those words come out of my mouth saying that, you know what, I learned English with YouTube videos about uh, learning English, you know, I watched those uh, educational content on YouTube about how to memorize words or, or I watch Reels, uh, Instagram Reels or TikToks, this is how I learned English. No, you can never hear those words come out of my mouth because I never learned English with teachers, whether that's in real life or on social media, on YouTube or on the internet. That's my first thing that I would always say to you, okay? So today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna talk about two words. I'm gonna talk about one phrasal verb and one word in this video. And I'm gonna explain their meanings with the traditional way. And then I'm gonna explain their meanings the way I learn their meanings, the way I learn them, okay? <laughs> Today I want to talk about the meanings of go through. Obviously in English, go through has a lot of different meanings. Go through means that to experience or endure something difficult or unpleasant. For instance, you know, you have an exam and you feel so stressed about it and you feel so anxious because of your exam and you're going to take this exam and you need to pass your exam and you say that, oh, I had to go through a lot of stress before my exam you experience something difficult or unpleasant. You suffer from something. It's not a nice situation. Let's say you break up with your girlfriend or boyfriend and you say that I go through a tough time. The second meaning of go through to examine or search through something in detail. I need to go through my notes before the presentation. So that means you're gonna take a very quick look at them. You're gonna examine them or you're gonna search for some information that is very important for you. Okay guys, that was a traditional way of learning English. I gave you guys some of the meanings of go through, which go through has way more meanings than I gave you in this example. And I explained their meanings with sentences. Now the thing is, when you ask me, Arsan, okay, what is the meaning of go through? How did you learn the meaning of go through? When you ask me this question, I can't tell you the definition of it. Pay attention to the sentence very carefully. I can't tell you the definition of go through, but I can tell you the situation where I can say go through. The situation. That's the thing, guys. There is this direct scene that comes to my mind when I say go through. Look at it, guys. For instance, this scene directly comes to my mind when I say go through. This girl with yellow dress, there is this, this music in the background. It's, it has a very dark theme. The music is very dark and kind of like depressing and emotional. And I see this, you see this girl with yellow dress and she's having a cigarette. She's smoking a cigarette. And basically we see this very depressing, very sad figure in this scene. And there is this music in the background. This is a situation where I, we can say go through. She's going through it. For instance, maybe she broke up with her boyfriend and she's feeling very sad and she's going through it. Okay, that's the one thing. You see the image, you see a girl, in my opinion, for me beautiful, and there is this song in the background which directly affects your emotions. In our edu current education system, we ignore the emotions. In the first example, when I explained to you guys the meaning of go through, I speak in like robotic, right? I just explain the meaning of go through. Maybe I insert a few pictures and that's it. There is no emotions going on here. There is no excitement going on here. When it comes to language, we need to use our emotions. And every single education system ignore the emotions. For instance, everybody always says that, you know, go abroad. If you go abroad, you can definitely 
I learn the language very fast, you know, learn English very fast so, because you're gonna be exposing yourself to English all the time, you immerse yourself in culture, etc. But the main reason when you go abroad, if you spend time there, if you live there for a while, the main reason you will learn English faster is because you're gonna interact with people and Interaction is not about just speaking. When you interact with people, you feel emotions. Let's say you go on a first date and you laugh, you cry, or you feel embarrassed, you feel insecure sometimes. Sometimes you feel confidence. You're having dinner with your friends, you talk about the stories, or you share the stories of your life. Or maybe you're meeting up with your friends and you're like, did you watch the last episode of Succession? It was great, it was wild, it was amazing. Or it was bad, I didn't like the I like Roman so much. You know what, there is always story going on. you make jokes and that helps you to learn English because you feel emotions sometimes you feel embarrassed sometimes you don't speak at all because you feel so nervous even feel nervous even feel embarrassed help you to learn English basically in every single situation we use our emotions and language is we don't speak in a robotic way without feelings Language is a way of expressing our feelings, our emotions and our thoughts. Our thoughts and our emotions go hand in hand. So when it comes to speaking, we can ignore the emotional aspect of language. I've been talking about myself all night long, I'm sorry. What about you? Tell me one of your stories. Once, I got on the subway, right? And it was at night. And I rode it all the way to Brooklyn. Now, of course, Arsene, you will say that, okay, we're not we're not living abroad, okay? For instance, in my case, I live in Turkey, there is no one around me that I can talk to in English. So, what if we do in this situation? The most important thing about this example is, seeing this scene, just watching this scene is never enough for you to learn English. You need to get into the story. You need to get into it. You need to feel the story. Now you need to act on it. This is the reason why I always, always study with script. Exist. I've seen it twice. I watched it twice when I was in high school. I literally watch the office bloopers when I am sad or going through something. Just know that you're not alone. There's lots of people who are also going through it. Hand over your money now. That way, we don't have to go through the formality of actually playing. You know, it's nice to, to hear from people that like have gone through this and know what it's like and went through the shit of it and went through the amazing parts of it. I I, I can just imagine what goes through your your mind when you're thinking about this. I mean, that's. Wait, does he eat chalk? <laughs> just because I don't want her to go through what I went through with Carl. Um... Sometimes I'll just go through my Instagram DM. Hopefully I actually go through with this video. I I'm surprised you went through with this video, honestly. But boredom. <laughs> Anyways, basically I'm going to go through these categories and pick a few videos from each category. I'm not just going to scan a 300 page document and put it up before we have gone through everything. I did that already. Well, let's go through all the sitting congressmen one by one and see if anybody sticks out from the crowd. There is so many situations where I remember the meaning of God here from. The reason why I can't remember every single situation is because I act on it. I repeat the lines and while I'm repeating the lines, I create those scenes. So basically I use my imagination and that helps me to experience the scene. So it's so important to learn English with a story, but not just watching the story, by just feeling the story and working with the story. If you are struggling right now, just know that you're not alone. There's lots of people who are also going through it. Um, I have my good days and my bad days. Today was a better day. I have my good days, I have my bad days. Today was a better day. And if you're struggling right now, just know that there's lots of people who are also going through it. I have my bad days, I have my good days, and today was a better day. That exactly what's helping me to learn English. Basically, I kind of like create those, recreate those scenes again and again in my head. And that helps you to learn English by yourself if you're alone. What comes to your mind when I say interrupt? Or in which situations would you use interrupt? For instance, I don't know the definition of interrupt. You know, I didn't memorize the definition of interrupt. 
stop the continuous progress of an activity or process. The other thing is uh, stop someone speaking by saying or doing something. These are the meanings of interrupt, for instance. I don't know the definition of interrupt. I know the situations where I can say interrupt. Four years ago, the time where I was practicing with House of Cards, I remember coming across the word interrupt. The elephant is madness. Congressman, sorry to interrupt. I saw you sitting over here. Remy. I can remember this scene all the time because I practice with those scenes. Not because I watch the House of Cards, because there is no way I can remember every single scene. Not because I watch the scene, but I practice with this scene. Sorry to interrupt. Don't focus on memorizing the words or their definition. But focus on the emotions. You're watching something, you're learning something, make sure that it's emotionally very strong, very striking to you. That affects you emotionally, that you feel it. And the second thing is, watching something, watching another YouTuber's video or watching films and movies and TV shows will never be enough for you to learn English. If you're learning English by yourself, you need to act on it. You need to try to experience a situation. So always, always, like as an actor, you work on them. What you need to understand is, our traditional education system is uh, based on memorizing, based on watching and learning, and learning. But this is not how we learn. We learn with experiences. Experiences involve emotions. The point of this video, that I, what I want to take out of this video, is that yes, school old school methods our traditional education system obviously sucked but other than learn english in school in a traditional way what i see right now on youtube or on social media is on youtube on instagram on tiktok i still see these traditional ways of learning english and honestly for i don't know maybe that doesn't apply to you guys but for me in my personal experiences in my way of learning english by myself those videos on Instagram, on YouTube, those educational videos where people, where teachers teach English, never work for me. I learned English with Kennedy, but I never learned English with English teacher. I never learned English with watching Instagram reels where they explain the meaning of, for instance, libel. Neither memorization or feedback-based testing encourages students to apply their language learning to real-life situations. Language is more complex than simple memorization, translation tasks, or essay writing. Alternative approach that is rarely used in language learning would be to include more creativity in assessment. Creative assessment in modern languages can be any artistically inspired exercise aimed at measuring students' performance. For instance, you're a painter, right? In order to learn how to paint, in order to improve your painting, you need to paint. That's it, okay? You can't just sit in your chair and watch all the famous uh, painters' art, you know, all day long can be a good painter. You just need to paint. In order to be a good author, you need to write constantly. You need to think, you need to read, and you need to write, right? So, in order to speak a language, you need to speak, you need to act on it. Speaking a language is not different than creating something. So if you really wanna speak English fluently, just turn off your video and then start practicing right now. Because without practicing, without action, you can't speak English fluently.